The rescue of 33 miners from the depths of a copper mine in Chile touched the world. What began as a catastrophic mining disaster became a story of hope, endurance, and technical ingenuity. As the world held its breath, an unprecedented rescue mission swung into action. Channel 4 was there, capturing this unfolding drama to create the definitive day-by-day -day account. The story of how 33 miners buried alive were miraculously saved. August the 5th, 2010. The San Jose mine in northern Chile is ripped apart by a massive collapse. Our story begins with retired miner Jose Vega. His son Alex was working in the mine and he hasn't signed back in from his shift. Alex and 32 other men are missing, feared dead. Jose knows this mine well. He gathers a search party and together they drive down into the mine's access tunnel, desperately searching for survivors. El piso agrietado, una Y, el techo agrietado, los costados agrietados. Y cayendo piedra a diferentes lugares. Y en verdad pues, daba miedo. Mucho miedo. Jose drives deeper and deeper down through the unstable mine. But suddenly, his path is blocked by a huge slab of fallen rock. Jose's only hope of finding his son is if he can find a way down beneath the collapse. The main tunnels of this mine, which spiral over 2,500 feet into the earth, are linked by vertical ventilation shafts. So Jose and his team try to abseil down through these shafts. The unstable mine is still creaking. If it collapses again, they could easily be crushed. Buen poco, no sabría en este rato medirlo porque la ansiedad, los minutos se hacen horas. Así que no sé cuántos metros bajamos. Había un un lugar que parecía firme. Jose's found a shaft down to beneath the collapse. The authorities send in another search party. But suddenly, the ground shakes again. It's a second collapse. The ventilation shafts are completely crushed. Chimenea completamente cerrada. El 12-8 no existe. Jose is forced to leave the mine without knowing whether his son is alive or dead. Mining Minister Lawrence Goldburn is on site coordinating the operation. That collapse meant that there was no way that we will make this rescue in a short period of time. A manned rescue mission is now out of the question. The first of nine high-speed drilling rigs arrive at the site. These machines are now the only hope of finding the miners.
Each rig will bore an exploratory six-inch wide hole into tunnels below the collapse. Raul Dagnino is in charge of one of the drilling rigs. The big challenge on this is we need to drill fast because what we know is that the miners underground, they only have a few days to, to, to survive. After that, there is not going to be oxygen. More and more of the missing miners' friends and families are gathering at the mine, desperately hoping for news. Carola's husband, Raul Bustos, was an engineer on the day shift. Abajo está mi marido, y acá lo estoy esperando yo, y en Talcahuano lo esperan sus dos hijos. Él es fuerte. Él va a salir. The drills are targeted at three levels, where the miners might be trapped. The first is 1,000 feet down, but there's no sign of life. The next, at 1,660 feet. Again, there's just a dark and empty tunnel. The last place left to look is a refuge right at the bottom of the mine, a room with maybe three days of food. But it's gonna take another whole week to reach it. Rescue teams aim for tunnels near the refuge. They're only 15 feet wide and 2,200 feet down. To make matters worse, the drills are also deflected by the hard rock. So engineers must adjust the trajectory of the drills, like trying to curve a football into the top corner of a goal. But this goal is half a mile away. Fourteen days have now passed since the mine collapsed. The first of four drills is nearing the refuge. But it misses the target by less than a hundred feet. It's obviously a big disappointing for the crew, you know. We normally work for finding minerals, you know. We, we never drill to find lives. And you see all this big camp and everybody there, you know, people crying. It's getting critical. More days, less chances. We have to keep drilling until we, we hit the target, you know. It's been two and a half weeks. Everyone fears the miners are dead. But then, in the early hours of the morning, all the drilling teams stop. One of the rigs has broken through into a tunnel close to the refuge. Everyone listens. Engineers think they can hear faint banging sounds reverberating up the drill pipe. For the next six hours, they wait while the drill is winched back to the surface. When it finally emerges, Goldburn and his team discover something incredible. A note is strapped to the end. A 
A CCTV camera and phone line are lowered down into the hole. Out of the darkness, the first blurred images of the miners emerge. Hello? Si lo escucho. Luis Ursúa, acá habla el ministro de Minería, Lorenz Goldborn. Estamos bien, con los ánimos esperando que los rescaten. Estamos ya iniciando los procesos de hacer túneles, chimeneas. Jubilant strains of the Chilean national anthem reach the surface. But after 17 days facing death in the blackness, no one knows how well their bodies and minds have coped. After 17 days entombed half a mile underground, the 33 miners begin to tell us their story. Luis Ursua is the shift supervisor, the boss of all the men. After the collapse, Luis sent out search parties. The miners discovered they weren't just confined to the refuge. They're also able to move through over half a mile of tunnels. On camera, they describe the desperation of those first 17 days. Lewis insisted they strictly ration what little food they had. Each survived on just a sip of milk and one spoon of tuna every two days. Ahí fue nuestra primera cocina. En una de las tapas de un filtro de un camión, hicimos una sopita muy rica por lo demás. 17 days of starvation has left their bodies close to collapse. Getting them food is the top priority. Three six-inch bores were drilled during the initial search. One hit the tunnel outside the refuge. The other two broke through higher into a tunnel near the workshop. Now these narrow holes are critical lifelines. Hollow tubes will be packed with provisions and winched 2,300 feet down to the miners. But there's a problem. The food they so desperately need could kill them. The Chilean government called up NASA to give advice. Medic Dr. Jay Polk was part of the team. Because the miners were eating barely enough to get by, probably less than 300 calories a day. And in fact, they were starving. What we worry about is something called refeeding syndrome, which can cause a low level of phosphate, which can then lead to cardiac dysrhythmias or cardiac failure. Too much carbohydrate can cause a fatal shock to the system, as phosphate is diverted away from the heart. So a carefully balanced solution of glucose, minerals, and vitamins is shipped down. Engineers now focus on a plan for getting the men out. They must bore a half mile long shaft into the ground, wide enough to lower an escape capsule down to rescue the men. This complex feat of engineering could last months, and no one knows how long the miners can survive.
Cheers ring out around the sprawling collection of tents, now named Camp Hope. The rescue drill has arrived. This is the Strata 950. It will soon become known as Plan A. This drill cuts using three rotating tungsten steel discs. First, it will punch a 15-inch pilot hole down to the minus. Then, a second device, known as a reamer, will widen the hole to around 28 inches, wide enough to extract the men. The Strata 950 is designed to drill perfectly straight vertical holes. It also needs over 20 litres of water per second to lubricate and cool the cutting bit. But there's a problem. The mine is in the middle of the Atacama Desert, the driest place on Earth. The nearest water supply is a borehole, an hour's drive from the mine. At Camp Hope, the never-ending convoy of water tankers is a reassuring sign of the effort being made to get the men out alive. Below ground, the miners are putting on a brave face for the cameras. But Victor Segovia reveals the strain they're under in a letter to his brother, Pedro. Perucho, tío, te voy a mentir. ¿Cómo está la cosa aquí abajo? Aquí estamos muy mal. Este infierno me está matando. Trato de ser fuerte, pero cuesta. Cuando duermo, de repente, sueño que estamos en un asado. Y cuando despierto, me encuentro encerrado en esta oscuridad. On the evening of the 31st of August, the drilling begins. The bad news is that it's going to take at least three months to get the miners out, and they're really suffering. The tunnels are so deep, they're heated to a constant 95 degrees Fahrenheit by the Earth's core. The rock walls are dripping with moisture, and the humidity in the air is a suffocating 95%. Even the darkness poses a threat. We worry about the lack of exposure to uh, UV light, uh, UVA and B. The UVA and UVB help kill bacteria and fungus and viruses. Without that, the men are probably more at risk uh, for fungal infections, bacterial infections, etc. in the mine. The oldest miner, Mario Gomez, is fast approaching his 64th birthday. And 56-year-old Jorge Gaigios has high blood pressure, whilst Jose Ojeda is diabetic. With the men already weak, a simple infection could be fatal. Eerie images of the trapped miners have been broadcast around the world. One man who found himself watching the news in horror was Pennsylvania-based drilling expert Brandon Fisher. Whenever we initially saw that they were planning on taking as long as Christmas, we felt that we needed to get involved and at least reach out and let people know from Chile that we have technology that could possibly help. Brandon picked up the phone, jumped on a plane, and on day 30, his team rolled into Camp Hope with the American-built SRAM T-130.
Instead of grinding the rock like plan A, this drill will smash it. Compressed air forces the drill head, bristling with hardened tungsten steel points, into the rock 20 times a second. It's twice as fast as the Strata 950. But there's a drawback. You can't steer this drill. But Brandon has an idea of how to keep his drill on course. He plans to sacrifice one of the three supply boreholes to guide his air-powered hammer. Brandon's workshop has designed a special hammerhead with a guide piece on the tip that will allow the drill to follow the existing pilot hole. Early the next day, Brandon fires up the rig and plan B starts to drill. But the desert rock is extremely hard. No one knows if Brandon's purpose-built hammer drill will stay the course. The speed and economics in most cases outweigh the, the chance or the risk that you take. If his plan works, the miners could be out in under six weeks. The miners start to make some requests. Cigarettes and alcohol. The medics refuse and send down nicotine patches. It's not a popular move. But to keep the miners' spirits up, they get to watch a live football match between Chile and the Ukraine. While the families watch above ground, the men also follow the action thanks to a projector and half a mile of fiber optic cable. Bizarrely, one of the miners is a former international football player, Franklin Lobos. He gives the half time analysis. Clearly, the Ukrainians didn't read the script. The match ends in a 2-1 defeat. <laughs> Our crew picks up on a strange sense of calm. After the fun of yesterday's match, it's almost like the rescue is a done deal. But a problem with Plan B quickly brings everyone back to the reality of just how hard this is going to be. Half an hour ago, we had a problem because uh, the drill uh, is broken. So we have to put a video camera and see what happened there. The camera reveals that Plan B's hammerhead has disintegrated. It's hit an iron roof bolt close to a tunnel that no one knew existed. The fragments are wedged over 800 feet down the 12-inch hole. Plan B is now dead in its tracks. Day 36, there's more bad news. A leaking hydraulic hose shuts down Plan A. Below ground, the miners know there's something wrong. They can hear all the drilling has stopped.
Maria Segovia receives a letter from her brother Dario. He desperately wants to know what's going on. The miners have now been trapped underground for more than a month. All attempts to rescue them have stalled. At the San Jose mine, the mission to rescue 33 miners trapped underground is not going well. Plan B's drill bit is broken, blocking the hole. And Plan A has been shut down for maintenance. But today, new hope thunders in through the gates of the mine. A convoy of 42 massive trucks carrying the pieces of a monster new drill. This is Plan C. A few weeks ago, this oil platform was in bits, languishing at the Bolivian border. But when its Canadian owners heard about the miners, they knew their supersized rig could beat the competition. It's so big, it needs to be constructed on a flat piece of land the size of a football pitch. For the miners' families, the rise of this 150-foot-tall, super-fast drill is a reassuring sight. Supuestamente dicen que esa máquina hace 100 metros diario. Entonces es como más cortito, si no se pero no se pasa nada en el camino. But this monster is so big, it'll take 9 days to construct. As more footage emerges from underground, we're getting to know some of the miners well. Mario Sepulveda acts as an official spokesman. He's also a bit of a character. The Plan A drill is back online, but running very slowly. Plan B's broken drill bit is still stuck, totally blocking the hole. It's frustrating. Uh, it's not a quick process to get back out of the ground. Everyone sucked it up, and we quickly started manufacturing on-site fishing tools, apparatuses to go down and retrieve the broken metal out of the ground. If engineers can't remove the broken drill bit, they'll have to abandon the hole and start again from the surface. When you are in the drilling business, you know, you drill a hole, well, and if you lose a hole, then, then you lose money, you know, but, but if you lose the holes here, you can lose lives. This evening, one of Chile's most sacred icons, the Virgin Maria del Carmen, is brought to visit the camp. As the families pray for the men trapped half a mile underground, engineers make a last desperate attempt to repair Plan B. They're using what's called a spider, a metal tube with teeth cut into its tip. It's lowered down to the bottom of the hole. Then, as it approaches the obstruction, 
it's pushed down under immense pressure. This forces the teeth to bend inwards, enclosing the metal lump. Engineers must now wait and see if their spider has held on to its catch. Plan B can finally begin drilling again. The miners have now spent 40 days trapped underground, 15 days longer than anyone in history. Psychologists put their resilience down to one word, faith. Faith plays a key role in maintaining your motivation to survive. It's the understanding of the people who are trying to rescue you that they are technically good, that they are working 24-7 on your behalf. Uh, faith in your family, that your family has not given up on you. Faith in your comrades that are with you. They will keep encouraging you and you will keep encouraging them. And faith in yourself and in your religion. And without those, they lose the ability as a team to continue to work toward their survival. Their faith is about to be rewarded. Early in the morning, with a sudden blast of water, Plan B's 12-inch drill bit smashes through the roof. But in reality, the battle is only half won. The 2,067 foot shaft must now be widened from 12 to 28 inches. Brandon's Pennsylvania workshop has specially built a powerful new drill bit for the task. This time it doesn't just have one hammer, it has four. Each hammer can pulverize the rock at a rate of three feet per hour. If there are no setbacks, Brandon could reach the miners in 26 days. Today is the 18th of September, the 200th anniversary of Chilean independence. Half a mile underground, the miners put on a display of patriotism and unity. They have to keep their faith that the government-led operation will save their lives, and soon. The alternative doesn't bear thinking about. After 44 days entombed in the mine, the men's psychological well-being is now as much of a concern as their physical health. The authorities have relented and agreed to the repeated demands for cigarettes. <laughs> the massive Plan C rig is finally complete. Its 28-inch bit is powerful enough to dig the rescue shaft in just one pass and in only 20 days. Water will cool the three interlocking drill heads, which tear at the rock, driving debris to the surface. Everyone now seems to take it for granted that Plan C will be the savior. It's ceremonially switched on by Mining Minister Goldburn. 
Vamos a partir la perforación de la sonda petrolera en un segundo. ¿Esto primero? For the first time, all three drills are up and running. Brandon's high-risk plan B suffers a second catastrophic failure. The drill bit has broken again, and this time there's no hiding it from the miners. Instantly, they were on the telephone, called us to let us know there was a bit in the hole. The only time in my life that I've ever drilled a hole that we have communication below that tells us what's going on. On camera, the miners joke about the accident, but it seems Plan B is no match for the hard rock. As their 50th day underground approaches, the miners' rescue is still far from assured. For the 33 miners, it's been a painful waiting game, with hopes raised and then dashed. But today, day 52 brings an exciting development. The escape vehicle, dubbed the Phoenix, arrives, painted in the colors of the Chilean flag. Cada día que llega alguna tecnología, para nosotros es un día menos que falta para poder verlo. Entonces, cualquier cosa que llegue, la cápsula ya te dice que falta menos, que, fa que, que está pronta la llegada de ellos. The men will spend 20 minutes alone, unable to move, as the capsule is dragged up the half mile narrow shaft of rock. The miners will wear a harness in case they pass out. There's an intercom and oxygen supply. If the capsule jams in the shaft, there's a mechanism that splits it in two. The man will then be winched back down into the mine. The mission to rescue the miners has taken an unexpected turn. Once hailed as the savior, Plan C isn't living up to its promise. The rock is so hard, the drill is only chewing through around 50 feet a day and hasn't even reached halfway. Then authorities decide to shut down Plan A, which hasn't even finished its pilot hole. Underground, the miners are busy. They need to clear the 20 tons of debris that fall from Plan B's drill every day. They've been sent down diesel to fuel the heavy machinery, also trapped by the collapse. It's dangerous work. As day breaks, Plan B is just 10 feet away from finishing the escape shaft. It's a dangerous time. 
The rock just above the tunnel roof is weak. The threat of another collapse is very real. We're going to take our time going through talking to the miners. They'll be telling us what they're seeing down there. They've reached the final few feet. Now they're drilling at half speed, inching toward their target. Oh, everyone's just completely pumped up right now. Then, at 8 a.m. Congratulations, Ben. Plan B has broken through. <laughs> Best drillers I've ever seen. We did it, man. 33 days, 33 miners. I just can't believe we're finally here. It's just, I, I don't even know what to say. I just feel like I'm ready to explode. After more than two months underground, the Plan B team have given the miners the lifeline that will provide their escape. This is the hardest job I've ever been on in my life, technically and obviously emotionally. And uh, it fought us the whole way. At the very end, you probably saw the, the pipe jamming. The roof bolts were catching in the teeth. And, you know, it's like, oh, great, we're not going to be able to make it. But, uh, you yeah, know, we made it. With his work done, Brandon and the triumphant Team B pack up and head home. They leave the glory and celebrations to the miners and their families. But during the last night before the rescue begins, there's fear too. No one knows how the men will be affected by their long ordeal in the dark tunnels of the mine. Que lo único que quieres es verlo y abrazarlo. Pero tú igual entiendes que en algún momento ellos van a querer estar solos. Y eso vas a tener que respetarlo. Porque vivieron mucho tiempo solos. Se acostumbraron a otra forma de vivir abajo. Entonces vamos a tener que empezar todo de nuevo. In the early hours of day 69, the final phase of this ambitious rescue mission is about to begin. Medics have already decided that a few strong men will lead the way in case of problems, followed by the ill and weakened miners. Florencio Avalos, the first to be filmed alive, will be the first to leave. As he's winched up the narrow escape shaft, his wife Monica and seven-year-old son are anxiously waiting alongside Chilean president Sebastián Piñera. Just after midnight, the capsule breaks the surface. The cage door is opened and Florencio is a free man. The next to emerge is the group's energetic spokesman, Mario Sepulveda, armed with souvenir rocks. Now, one by one, the men are winched back to life. <laughs> Alex Vega is the tenth man out. His dad, Jose, launched the very first search party.
Carola is finally reunited with her husband, Raul. The last to surface, to a hero's welcome, is the leader credited with saving his men's lives. Luis Ursua. Seventy days ago, what looked like a horrifying catastrophe has since become a miraculous story of technological ingenuity, comradeship and courage witnessed by the world.